Hello and welcome, all fans of the Yu-Gi-Oh! universe. This past weekend, we had the World Championships in Seattle, Washington, uh, USA. Not gonna lie, kinda sleeper. They were using a unique format, and I say unique, but it was actually pretty sh- Lacrimo was still allowed, Beatrice was still allowed, Appaloosa was still allowed, so it was essentially just everything that was wrong with Infinite Forbidden was still allowed in that format. There was also Master Duel, Duel Links, and Duel Links. I didn't even know it had a Go Rush mode, so that was news to me. Not that I even looked at it because I don't really have any interest in Go Rush, but I mean, it's cool. Duel Links is still popping as a, as a platform and as a game and still gets to display itself on the world stage right speed duel can't say the same thing it, it was overall a, a pretty chill weekend uh, any weekend where you sit down and watch you go all weekend is usually going to be like a pretty all right weekend as long as you keep your expectations low even the controversy with uh decade you know i'm not here to dick ride or to condone any of his actions but i just think it's kind of funny how he leaked all of the deck lists of the master duel players and quattro got shark eliminated in uh, in Yu-Gi-Oh's Exo for the exact same thing like Shark got eliminated from na their version of Nationals I believe because Quattro dropped his cards somewhere or something. I don't think anything happened to DK. I don't really agree with you know the the, the method of him exposing all the people's deck lists but uh I don't think it really would have been a big deal if people knew the decks other people were playing because a everyone had two decks um and b you don't know what deck they're playing before they start playing it and that's a hell of a lot, like, and to, to have that shit released the day of, it's like, you, you're not gonna, like, study everyone's fucking deck list, like, you know, I don't know, I just feel like it's a bit inconsequential as, uh, for people's deck list to get fucking exposed, especially Master Duel, but is what it is, right, um, hopefully, you know, it didn't affect the results of the tournament in any way. But that's not what we're here to really talk about. What we're here to really talk about is, um, I, I guess throughout the entire weekend, I was kind of bored watching Fiendsmith anything. Like, every TCG round was Fiendsmith. Fiendsmith something. Fiendsmith Snake Eye. Fiendsmith Ubel. Fiendsmith Bitchless. Uh, Ubel ended up taking it. But, uh, you know, I, I click on day two, you know, out of curiosity. And I think I was greeted to, like, one of the most anime fucking... Uh, duels that I've ever seen. So I guess we should just hop right into it. Now I'm I'm gonna keep the uh, the volume like a little low, just so like we can still hear some of it. But uh, essentially, it's like a three v three. I didn't even know Master Duel did their fucking tournaments like this. First off, if I would have known, like Master Duel did like this sort of like first to five kind of format where it's like almost like a a, a tag duel. Well, it basically is a tag duel. Like the way we do tag duels in the TCG. This is basically it, but it's like, instead of like a best two out of three, it is like you keep going until one team, uh, gets five wins. And I think that's really cool. And like, you really don't have to worry about time rules because master duel has a built in kind of like time system to it. You don't have to worry about judges or anything like that. The game self-governing, like it, everything you need is contained in master duel. So it's, there's a lot less mess, uh, going in, into an event like this and so we have i don't know their name uh, i might see it real quick here uh team the J joshua schmidt's team versus uh this team from japan i believe and you guys will probably hear this better than i will right uh so the so i didn't get to see the first round so this first round is going to be like a genuine reaction and then um i i saw how the later two rounds went and it, it was so insane I felt like I had to show you guys, or I had to like uh, commentate over just how crazy some of these duels went. All right. So Heroes Future, that's their name. So Heroes Future from Japan versus Snipe Hunters. Uh, all these uh, duelists here are German, um, which is great, representing their country. And so here we have uh, Joshua Schmidt versus, I'm just gonna keep saying Heroes Future because I don't wanna butcher their names. Uh, apologies in advance um, but obviously each team has three different players and so uh, Joshua Schmitz on Snake Eyes Fire King and uh, as, as you can see uh, Joshua Schmidt here is the A player so I don't know how they're ruling communicating between teams but um, normally in TCG if you're 
the B player, you can speak to both people. Um, so usually the B player is like the leader uh, and like the A and C players are kind of like A is kind of like your best guy and C is kind of like your guy to like hopefully pick up a win if A and B can't do so. And yeah, the way they do it in Master Duel, it's more like um, all three team members are just sitting there. I assume they have comms with each other. Like, I don't think there's any real rule against speaking to anyone in your team. Because otherwise, what would you need a headset for, you know? Um, and yeah, so even right here, right? So, oh yeah, I, I actually did start here. Okay, so Joshua Schmidt, um, he, he chained the Skyburn to the Thrust just so that uh thrust could not add the spell or trap to the hand it would be forced to set the spell or trap card instead of adding it to the hand which i thought was like really cool and uh i thought like was like pretty elite gaming um not even gonna hold you and so in this event everybody has two different decks and setting that heavy storm is like such a power move like yeah i got heavy storm bitch what are you gonna do about it now he uh resolved that grass and he got to mill seven cards and uh, one thing that, that the commentator mentions is that uh, this duelist from from Heroes Future, he plays 47 cards in his list just so he has those extra cards to mill off of grass. And I'm not too familiar with the Master Duel format. I, I'm not too familiar with how many copies grass is at, but, you know, to have those extra copies just to, you know, draw into them is, uh, is pretty crazy. Or to, to still draw into grass, even even with all those extra cards in your deck, is pretty crazy. But, uh, yeah. Okay. So, we're seeing uh, Imperm on the Kikalos here. And they do mention that it's Royal Rare for, you know, just to flex on the broke Master Duel players. <laughs> Alright, so normal out the Rhino Heart. We see the scream. We see Rhino Heart here. So it's gonna mill. Um, it's funny that like scream gets to be chain link one when Rhino Heart was normal summoned, so you could like chain block to scream because it's that that would essentially be telling you that it's like more important than the Rhino Heart, which I think is funny. All right, so I guess uh, the Suliac. I mean, even at this point, if he was just go battle phase, sit another one and pass, that's a. That's a pretty hefty board to go through. If you can just pop the Fire King Island, that might be hard to come back from. Seeing Tyr still be in the format after so long. Well, I, I understand this is Master Duel. It's a, it's a completely different format. But it's just crazy. I don't know. I'm, I'm just tired of seeing this deck. Like, I understand people love this deck because of how non-linear milling and the lines are. But god damn, do I just think, like, man, like, can we just get something else, please? <laughs> but, okay. So, we're going to synchro off the Destrudo that we hit off Rhino Heart, plus the uh, Vicious Astral out here to make a pep, which, because he paid half of his life points, is going to be sitting at 7,500. And that's just going to be able to swing for game. Uh, Joshua really didn't draw that well. Only had, like, like, he was making his opponent take the max C challenge, but after clearing his board, I don't know. I guess the, the cards wasn't really in his favor. So here we have uh, Quantil, another and another member of Heroes Future, facing off against each other. So Quantil is also playing tier. So me not knowing anything about the Master Duel format, seeing tier twice here means that, yeah, it's probably high tier. I mean... It has Kikalos, it has Maxi, it's probably high tier. It has Grass, it's definitely high tier. And, um, I know I saw Joshy, uh, jo I said Joshua, uh, Jesse Cotton talk about Snow. It's kind of weird, both their names start with, uh, J. But to see both of them, uh, or to see him talk about Snow is like, okay, so they have Snow, Maxi, Kikalos, what don't they have? <laughs> like, I don't, I don't get it. Like, tier is pretty much still tier one. Uh, tier limit strongest. And so sequencing is going to be the name of the game here. Um, to be in a format where tier and snake eye are like hand in hand as like the two decks you're going to see at the top tables and you bell. 
No, thank you. <laughs> oh, man, I would hate that. I, this this is uh, cementing why I don't like the Master Duel format. Also, Master Duel as a, as a platform just does not like combo players. Like, if, if your deck is like actual combo, like not like, uh, oh, summon one, summon two, summon three, like maybe summon like five or maybe seven or eight times and like that's it. But I mean like legitimately like comboing off. Like, the, the timer is, like, not going to be on your side, no matter how fast you fucking click. And then, if you have to interact with what your opponent's doing, and you don't know their deck, like, war, you know, like, uh, like every little part of their text, and you have to read anything, you're going to be screwed. Um, it's part of why the only time I have, I've had fun playing um, Master Duel was when I was playing Rescue Ace. And, that, and this was even before Simple Spoils came out. Um, it was just playing rescue ace with like nothing else and it was the most fun that i've had but they released promethean princess early but that that's why it was it was a lot of fun because he went like he sold into princess anyway enough about me um spirit of Ubel coming out uh it looks like tier has a pretty good situation here quanal looks like he has the board set up he uh he has a rukalos clyde heart and I kind of wish, like, I had, like, actual Master Duel open so that I could, like, actually watch, like, the, the live replay so I could read all the cards and stuff. That would be, that would be nicer. Which you can, I believe. You can actually go into the replay. Uh, like, the, the, like, the replays themselves are public, so you can go into them and, like, you know, if you want to, um, watch them. And, like, interact with them as they're playing on. You can do that. So he's going to be attacking into the Collider Heart, uh, giving Quano 3,000 points of damage because he doesn't take any, thanks to uh, Ubel's effect, and thanks to Nightmare Pain, Quanto takes all the damage. He's going to overlay into another fan of Ubel. But th this doesn't really look like he has anything, right? Like, Collider Heart could easily... I believe Collider Heart shuffles back into deck. Um, so I don't think there's really any threat here. From the U Bell side. Yeah, uh, Destrudo, Target, Rhino Heart, Synchro with the. Uh, uh, Tear Cash, make Baron. Oh, yeah, and they also have Baron still. Yeah. You know, we're the only format who, who banned that card. Uh, I don't know. I don't think Baron makes the game on hell. I, I think with the existence of Typhon. It's it's hard to argue that Baron is like extremely unhealthy, especially when it's only a single negate. I feel like maybe if it was multiple negates, I could kind of like see where you guys are coming from. But like as like a single negate, I, mean, I don't know. Well, and when I say multiple, I mean like oh, uh, like once every turn. Like it was like every turn and then like reset. The special summon back part, I think that part's a little much, right? Like like it doesn't need that effect. Even though it doesn't get used often, like, when it does get used, it is kind of stupid. Um, but, like, just to pop and negate, like, I feel like the Baron could have been fine. I feel like, uh, if they bring Baron back, it's gonna get errated to either require, uh, Chevalier the Fleur, or, uh, one of the Fleur Synchron, or, like, a Plant Tuner, or, or, or something like that. Like, it's gonna have, like, a way bigger restriction on summoning it if it does get errated but that would mean that the ocg and master duel would have to ban it as well um which yeah and we we kind of saw this coming so quantal was the only one of his three team members to get a win in that one round so uh as you can see the the, the stars in the middle here uh hero's future got two wins and snipe hunters only got one meaning that um this isn't like whoever gets to three first this is whoever gets to five first so they're going to keep going and that means that there's a maximum of like nine duels that can happen in any given round um and if it gets tied off then each team picks a representative to like so they're kind of deciding what decks uh, they should be playing and look it's dz fun commentary the tcg doesn't fucking upload these individual matches for whatever reason in europe they they upload every individual match but here in tcg we have to go through the eight hour fucking live stream
for whatever reason, which is just so stupid. I don't know who's at the TCG. And it's just free money. Like, you're just cutting up a stream. You're not even editing it. You're just using what's already there and just posting 45 minutes of content. With ad revenue and all that, you're you're losing out on money. Like, I don't know why Konami's not doing that. They literally, like, it's literally free money for Konami, and they're just not doing it. Anyway. So, coming into round two. So, so um, as I was, I think I almost mentioned it earlier, but I got distracted. So, so the duelists rotate. So, um, not everyone who faced each other last round is going to be facing against the same person. So, uh, on the top here in Heroes Future, we have Maguro facing off against Quanto. So, Quanto faced another opponent. So, Quanto won. Now, now they all rotate. Now, uh, Quanto is the C player. And I guess, like, uh, being the A, B, and C player in this case is only just to determine, like, who you get faced off against in, in any individual round. And that's another reason why I think the decks getting leaked wasn't that big of a deal, because there's no guarantee you are going to face the person whose deck that you were studying. Because even if you end up in a, in a 3v3 like this, if... Like, let's say either you or your opponent wins by um, by by the second round, then there is a chance that you don't even face the person that you whose who's deck you were, I don't know, prepping for, I guess. Anyway, so Horus tier, which is like, I think tier at its strongest. Uh, like Horus, fucking Grass, Zombie Vampire. The only thing they're really mi missing is like Chaos Ruler, and this is like full power tier. I don't care if the cards are limited; it really doesn't fucking matter. Um, all you need to do is slap a few. Um, is slap a Chaos Ruler into into this format, and this deck is fucking. It, it's basically just full power tier. So, uh, banish Trivi Karma, get the uh, planet. Normal summon out the Rhino Heart. So we're gonna mill the Havness. Uh, we're gonna fusion off with Havness. Most likely making a uh, Kit Kalos. So this is where, yeah, actually. Yeah, and uh, because Maguro hit him with the maxi, this is uh. He, he is under the maxi challenge at this point, but you're going to see why that may not matter. So here we go for Foolish, which opening Foolish in tier is just like, okay. Alright, so he milled uh, one of the statues. Uh, sets two and pass, because this is tier limit. He doesn't need to play during his turn. He can play on whoever's turn he wants. Uh, as long as you have the right card. So now, um, Maguro summons, uh, Alcanix. We don't have her here in TCG yet, but she is, like, uh, one of the crutch cards for, uh, Fire King, Snake Eye, and OCG. And I think she single-handedly keeps the Fire King variant alive over there. So she pops a Wing Beast and then adds another to your hand. So, she, no, she pops a fire in hand or field and add, adds a fire beast, wing beast, or, or beast warrior from your deck to hand. That's interesting. Sucks she's not in TCG. Anyway, um, you can see fucking Joshua Schmidt wombling down there with Centurion. And, uh... I, it is kind of cool that they're doing the, the duels like this, because, like, at least you get to see what's going on in the other two duels, but it... Man, it's just tough to, like, look over. Because, like, I kind of want to see, like, Joshua Schmidt fucking make his Centurion plays. Which he still kind of can, it's just the screen's really small. Anyway, uh, fucking Okanik gets hit with the Sullyak. Um, and then he mills a... Scream, and he also chains Tearcash. Okay. And then, so, Tear Cash is going to mill some more. Mills a Grief? Is that what, it, what that was? I guess it doesn't have any effect on mill. I don't know if he has, like, Droplet or something in his hand. 
No. Okay. The Abel Star. Okay, cool. All right. So the combos are going to keep going. Pretty good. I mean, one of the best extenders in the game right now. What are we going to set with the Diabel Star? Get that original. So there goes the original. Not have access to that already. Original simple spoils. All right. Uh, Quantil seems to have a response here. Maybe he mill. Oh yeah, he did mill the statue. So that's always going to. So it's always going to come back to him. But he also has Metal Noise. He's going to book a moon. His Diabel Star. Okay. This is a big problem. Mills to Havness. Oh man, that's so dumb. <laughs> um, right now, so we could go for the Kalos, um, potentially. I think that's pretty likely. All right. Yeah, uh we're going into I was going to see Dragos Apelia, but Rukalos actually makes more sense. Here in TCG, Rukalos and Kekalos did not last long together. They they were together for like maybe like a few weeks before Kekalos got the fucking ban hammer. So I I never really got to experience what they were like in the same deck. By the time I, I faced off against the Rukalos, Niggas was using King of the Swamp. Because I was not playing Yu Gi Oh physically around the time the uh, tier was out. Uh, so. Yeah, Rukalos is uh, going to stop Poplar from being able to summon itself, and then it gets to send itself to the graveyard. Or it gets to send any Tierlemans card to the graveyard, right? And then uh, he's going to send the Tier Cash, so the Tier Cash can also mill some more names. Or mill some more cards, hopefully more names. I'm so sorry, I looked away. What was the, uh, the set card? Uh, because this was his first fusion of the turn, so he could possibly mill, um... Yes. Okay, it got flipped face down. Thank you for Merly? I'm a professional here. Is that its name? I don't remember. Unless Merly's banned. Again, just getting extension. Okay, so he milled Rhino, which is even better than milling Merly. I think Merle is banned in this format, actually. Because they still have Sprite Alpha allowed. Like, I don't think they would have let Sprite Alpha and Merle stay in the same format. Which is like a ridiculous cope, right? Like, why are you banning the level 2 monster instead of just banning Sprite Alpha and Kikalos? I can tell you. Tier is still Tier 1. I, it's basically full power still. And actually being invited alongside Josh uh, as one of the teammates. All right, and look at my girl here. He's fucking thinking well. through all the lines. Your first Marshall World Champions. What more could you ask? And this, this is where it's it's kind of starting to feel like um like the Five Ds anime, like like the World Grand Prix in uh, uh, towards the end of Five Ds, where it's like you have like the fucking teams going off against each other, and it's like, you know. You're thinking like, oh, can my teammates carry this, or do I have to do, you know, all the work? Like, can, like, how can I make it out of this situation? And like, Maguro resolved a maxi, and you really couldn't even tell. You really could not even tell he resolved a maxi. It's just because Fire King is not much of a combo deck. Um, it has some lines, right? Like going second, you know, like uh, it, it, it it's more of like a snowball, like a like like. It starts off like kind of, kind of slow, um, and then it sets up everything. And then turn three, once everything's set up with the Garunix, the Kirin, Simple Spoils Engine, and you know Promethean Princess, that's when you can kind of start going off. But like, it's it, it, it takes you a turn or two to get there. So if you don't have that initial setup, you're not going to get the snowball. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, fucking. Joshua just won with Centurion with five monsters on his field in Centurion, which is crazy to think about. All right, so he milled Sharon, made Kaleido Heart. I mean, this Kaleido Heart got some thick ass thighs. You guys see that shit? Man, it's thick as hell. Man, it's thick than oatmeal. All right, so he bounced back the Ponix back into deck. There we go. You're gonna use a uh, simple spoils effect in the graveyard. We've seen Tailorman just come out on top of Snake Eye Fire King way more often than over and over and over. It just seems like they can play. Turnus, is this a turn two? Spicier tech cards that come out. Where? Oh, yeah, it's me. Are you Max see me? That's okay. We'll just play on your turn then. Huh. We are seeing the original simple spoils. Okay. Grab that Ponix right back. You know, if you missed it so much, here it is again, and that's pretty powerful. 
You can see the sanctuary, which was added with the Ponix earlier in the turn, get activated. We're going to let us allow that fire. All right. So pulling up the sanctuary, lets him activate the island from the deck. Very similar in that regard. It's true, and unfortunately for me as a collector, was only available to common for a long, long time. But now Island's gonna let him pop one, search another, go for Garunix. And uh Garunix has to trigger on resolution because it's a fair and balanced card. This looks pretty strong. I really hate Garunix. like I really didn't think much of the card when I first read it. But like the more I the more I see this card, the more I'm just like, dude, why did they fucking make this thing? You know, you know, this is what a structured boss should feel like. It should feel like annoying as fuck to play against. Like it just summons itself from hand or graveyard. It just does not give a fuck about the rules or anything. It, you, you you just keep seeing it. And that's a good structured boss right there. Like that that genuinely feels like as frustrating as a structured boss should. No, that's just my two cents on it. Because I, I, I genuinely hate Garunix. Not even because, like, I think the card's unfair or unbalanced or anything. I just hate that it just does so much. Just, like, stop doing things, please. You, you, like, you already have Snake Eyes in your deck. Let's, like, like, like let's not fucking, you know. Really, really impressive gameplay so far. They've tied up the... So it kind of looks like Quanto's out of interactions here, um, and Maguro's kind of just big thinking. And the fact that he plays the original uh, Garunix, uh, or High King Garunix 2, is actually kind of funny. Like, yeah, I, I didn't even think I would see that in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! Even though it's Master Duel, it's still technically modern, right? Like, I, I didn't think I would see that card again. Um, but here it is. And he's going to Link Rebuild, which is still not banned, right, um, in this format. Linking off with the uh, High Garunix into uh, Dark, right, and Dark gets to take a monster from the opponent's graveyard. So, uh, okay, Quantil's going to use his uh, statue here. So he's going to um, outplay the Dark, he's going to shuffle back his own Imseti, which I think is a good idea. Alright, shuffle back, uh, M-City, Grief, and a King Sark. Alright, here we go, battle phase. Alright, swing into Kaleido. Let's take a little bit of damage, nothing crazy. You know, still has more than 5,000 left. I mean, I'm sure he can make a... It's not really much to look at on this board. Um, we could potentially see a Promethean Princess, but... Instead, he just went straight into an SP. I guess because he didn't want to firelock himself. Maybe he, th he, maybe he thinks banishing something now could do him a lot more good than um, than going for something else. So Quantil draws a card here. And a comeback here is more than possible. Two cards in hand, and he drew the Grief. I don't know how many he plays, but drawing that off the top deck after shuffling it back... Pretty nice. <laughs> All right. Uh, so Kaleida Heart comes back from the graveyard, and then it uh, and then it uh, it gets sent to the graveyard, and then it could summon itself back by milling a tier limit. That is such a crazy interaction because now that means you get another fusion, and you get to pop with uh, Planet, and you get to shuffle back with uh, Kaleida Heart. And I believe he shuffled back his Kikalos last turn, so Kikalos should be live here. Um, and so Kaleida Heart's gonna bounce back the face down because that's a Diabell Star, I believe. Uh, Maguro's gonna chain the uh, SP, banish the Kaleida Heart. So Kaleida Heart shuffles back, and then Havnus is gonna make the Kikalos, I believe, here. Yep. There you go. Oh man, is gonna trigger here to pop another card on field. And the only card here you can really pop is Sanctuary. You don't want to pop the Fire King and, and give them something off of it because they still have Garunix. Uh and you don't wanna and you can't pop the island because Sanctuary is just gonna get destroyed instead. 
is going to be good because you can get rid of... Uh, I don't know if popping a monster into spawn trap zone counts as a monster on the field getting destroyed, but you don't want to take that chance, right? Just in case your opponent has some way to um, summon out Kirin, like to summon any fire monster to summon out, uh, and then summon out Kirin, and then summon back Runix from the graveyard, then Sanctuary being on the field allows them to make a rank 8 during your turn. So, yeah. Alright, Kakalos mills 5. You, we saw a Fairytale Snow in that mill. Uh, Sharon's going to activate here to do another fusion summon. You're going to make Rukalos. going to be at 3,500. Now, McGurl's still sitting at a big 8,000. So, uh, right now, uh, he's staring down 5,500. He just needs 2,500 more damage to uh, get the game. He's going for the fairy tale snow. Alright. Uh, he needs... It's 38.50 plus 35. It's about 72.50. Alright. So he's going to go into Dugaris here. So Dugaris can detach too. And he's choosing the effect to double the attack of his Rukalos, which is crazy, right? So he's going to bring it up to 7,000. He's going to try to end the game this turn. And there comes down the fucking Nibiru. And Rukalos can negate Nibiru. That's, that's not a big deal. But that actually saves him from getting gamed. Uh, this turn because but because Rukalos um, is going to uh, come back but it's it's only going to have 35 so uh, that won't be the 8,000 damage and Fairytale Snow is going to come out again but this time he's starting to banishing monsters some of his tournament spell and trap cards so that means like he's starting to run out of stuff to banish and now we can see it's only going to be about uh 7550 or, or 6550 excuse me you're going to the sp little knight absolutely let them draw it they're gonna draw the w see you later now it's gonna get rid of the fire king island so like he can't search any follow-up and that's gonna be his end board so sp comes back along with the collider heart and it's really like what can what can you really draw here you know i you probably have some good stuff in the graveyard but what can what else can you really draw here um other than because you got to consider like the fire king engine you got to consider a lot of different things in a normal summon max seat so it, it's kind of curious like what McGurl could think think he could do with that maxi but it, you know uh Quanil's just going to risk basically um all it, the, the rest of his graveyard plus the field spell which I didn't think he would risk because doesn't Rukalos mill a tier limit when she comes back? Or is that only Collider Heart? I think that's only Collider Heart, actually. Um, so never mind. But yeah, uh, it's going to go Snow to uh, Book of Moon the Maxi. And so McGrow just goes straight into End Phase. He doesn't uh, swing into anything. And so Dugaris basically screwed over Quantil because, because he activated the effect to double the attack of Rukalos, he has to skip this turn's battle phase. Meaning, um, Maguro knows that he has another turn on the board. He just has to be able to, you know, play around uh, whatever is going to bring out. But Quantil uses his SP Little Knight to make an Underworld Goddess. Which is... okay. I mean... That's fine, I guess, you know. Uh, but Underworld Goddess can, uh, negate the effects of cards in the graveyard, I believe. Let me just make sure I know exactly what Underworld Goddess says here. So what does she do? She stops 
9,000 damage on board versus 1450 life. A Carter effect that special summons a monster from the graveyard. You can negate the activation. Otherwise, uh, and it also is unaffected by activated effects unless they target. So it seems like a pretty significant advantage that Quano has here, right? He has Rukalos, Honorable Goddess, uh, and Kalada Heart just in case. Um, it's just an extra body. Maguro's sitting at 1450. He's wondering what, what can happen here. He can't summon from Graveyard. He can't activate an effect that summons a monster as long as Rukalos is on board. But he's not giving up yet. Both his uh, teammates have taken a loss, so uh, Hero's future is at two stars here. Or is still at two stars. Uh, and Snipe Hunters went up to three stars because they, they got two wins this round. And la first round, they only got one. So it's... But yeah, so he flips summons the Maxi and goes into Amirage. And then he special summons out the Abel Star. Now, because the Abel Star special summons itself by, you know, um, summoning conditions, Rukalos can't really interact with it. And now... He goes into Hida. And Hida's going to be interesting because she's not going to try to activate her effect. She's just going to swing into the Rukalos. A, triggering Garunix, and B, triggering Hida. Meaning, Hida's going to chain block the Garunix from being negated. And he's going to get a search for a fire monster. And it's like, okay, well, <laughs> searching Snake Eye Ash... That's kind of crazy. And then going Garunix, and the fact that like it gains attack equal to half of the monster that you mill, which, okay, going up to 3,900 just in battle phase, that's actually kind of kind of nutty. So now he gets to swing over another monster here. He's going to swing over the Rukalos, right? Because that's the biggest threat. Now, Rukalos can't bring itself back because it, it can only revive itself as sent to grave by a card effect. So now we're going to normal summon Snake Eye Ash, uh, assumingly no more interactions um, to deal with this card. And this is why I was talking about Garunix earlier, because it was like, what the fuck? <laughs> so now this guy's at 300 life points left. This fucking Yusei Fudo comboing off, coming back from, like, the brink of fucking uh, loss here. So now, we'll, you know, uh, Poplar goes into Spawn Trap Zone. Ash can send it in Poplar to summon the Snake Eyes from deck. He's going to bring out the lamest fucking Snake Eyes there is. Quantil's just here, just fucking, like, wondering where it all went wrong. <laughs> if that Dugaris was worth it. Now, Flamebird gets to put Underworld Goddess into the Spawn Trap Zone. Now he gets to link off with the Garunix and the Flamebird. Make a Sunlight Wolf. Flamebird's going to trigger. Summoning back Ash. And uh, Ponix. Ponix triggers. Sunlight Wolf is going to trigger here, too. Ugh. <sighs> This deck is too much. This 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 deck is just too stupid. But dude had like two cards, three hundred life points, and he is going to turn the tide of this game back against Tier Limit, which is just wild. So now he's linking four into an Apo, another banned card here in TCG. He couldn't make this come back in TCG, but I think that's fine. All right, so now he's going to trigger the uh, Kaleida Heart. Uh, Apple's going to handle it. Quantil just kind of screwed in that position. And then he just goes straight into Enphase with 300 life points and a 1600 attack Appalooza. Does he have any way to fight off against, like, uh, like a normal summon Rhino Heart with, like, Pearl Arena? I don't know if Pearl Arena is limited in this format. Where's that Gemini Elf when you need it? Exactly. Left it back in fourth grade twenty years ago. And despite 
the Snake Eye Viking deck historically throughout this tournament, throughout day one. Uh, <sighs> yeah, I think him banishing his fucking field spell was like kind of tough, but I guess it doesn't matter, right? Like he has two cards in hand, and you know, wanted poster for Dia Bellstar. I think I think Quan will sees it. You know, you can you can see it in his face. You can see that that little. Uh, Yeah. Gonna see the Kieran activate. He's slowly accepting his reality here. I mean, this is, so he's not just going to scoop because he's going to assume that, um, you know, there's a possibility. But with like Apo and the and the Fire Kings, I think um, at this point, right, if you're Quantal, you, you you see all this happening, and you just don't want to preemptively scoop because. Every little bit that your opponent is doing is information, you know. Um, even if it is just the smallest bit of like information, you know, you'd much rather not preemptively quit just to see everything your opponent can do. And yeah, Maguro just makes the most fucking insane comeback. Fucking clutch ass fucking game. And as much as I hate sna uh, Snake Eyes, and as much as I hate. Uh, Hi, uh, Fire King Garunix. That, that was a pretty fun game to watch. You know, Yu-Gi-Oh! does feel good to watch sometimes. You know, or, or a high-level Yu-Gi-Oh! You know, like a broken clock is right twice a day. You know, kind of energy. Except the broken clock is the meta. Now, Joshua lost his first game. He he redeemed himself with the second one. But now, you know, uh, both teams are at three, three stars. Basically, this third round determines who gets to go home with the dub and who gets to go home with just play mats and deck boxes all right looks like they're getting ready to go right three stars each team all right two wins one losses whoever takes it takes it so we're seeing a uh, emray here and so immediately nightmare pain's being met with a ghost ogre which is being met with a gamma I don't believe Gamma's limited in this format, maybe semi'd, and the Gamma's being met with a Nash Blossom, which is a weird decision, because you know that when you Ash Blossom a Gamma, it stays in the hand, so it's going, like, at least you know it's there, right, but, you know, sacrificing two hand traps just to be Nightmare Pain, like, is that worth it, is a good question. All right, so Nightmare Throne gets activated down, <laughs> which is crazy. Sacrifice two hand traps just to um, essentially do nothing to to the start of the U Bell combo. So we know we have he has a Dark Monster in hand because he could not have resolved Nightmare Pain's effect without having a Dark Monster. So we know he has a Dark Monster, he has a Gamma, Nightmare Throne. And now he has uh, the Dark Beckoning Beast that he searched. And he also has a Veiler, right? Opening Ash, Ogre, Veiler to start your turn is crazy. So Beckoning Beast is uh, kind of cooked. And look at this, man. Hero's Future, man. He's fucking... This guy's just fucking, like, contemplating... Like, man, like, what the fuck, is, like, can I actually do here? Now, Emery is, like, he he's just stone-faced right now. He is, like, Giga Chad fucking maxing. Uh, he's either completely unbothered or completely bothered. Like, I, I can't tell. Um, but that, that, is a, that is a face of a man that opens three hand traps. That's, the, that's, that's what I can tell you. Now it seems like in like all three of these duels, red team got to go first in every in every single match. <laughs> um, so that's kind of crazy. So we're seeing tier, we we're seeing fire king, and we see hero's future here make a phantom of U Bell, and then he's kind of just praying, you know, the three cards his opponent has are just not enough to beat this phantom. So, we're seeing Emre uh, talk with some of his teammates. 
Kind of seeing what the deal is. And we're seeing a set one, a set two, and just pass. I, there's, there's, there's no engine, I guess. It's kind of tough. Now we're seeing Hero's Future here. Ah, man, he looks devastated. No more engine. You're sitting on this Phantom of the U-Bell. And this is so tense because, like, you know that, like, whoever gets this dub is, like, almost guaranteed to win the team their fucking game. Ah, oh, man, we just saw a uh, Dia Ballstar get negated by Apo in a uh, dual A. But then Apo gets to swing over it? Okay. I do see over in Dual A, we have run over an Appaloosa, and um, All right. we're starting to come down. We're seeing Poplar come down, okay. So that could be in the favor Get you that original. Like, like we've oh, so many Heroes Features ending, just go straight into end phase. All right. M-Ray goes into draw phase, standby. Main phase, engine? Game, but they need to win the other two if they hope to proceed Dude drew three hand traps. Still no engine. And Hero's Future here got Nightmare Pain. I don't believe he used on Phantom of the U-Bell because you have to be able to destroy the monster. And Phantom of the U-Bell cannot be destroyed by card effects. So, either that... Actually, yeah, because that that would be the best... Because you know he still has Gamma in hand. So, if he would have been able to activate Nightmare Pain, he probably would have. Because who cares about a Phantom of the U-Bell? You probably have, like, two more in your fucking extra deck, right? And you have a Gamma to protect you from any hand traps. So, alright, Imperm on this Phantom of U-Bell. Let's see where this goes. Alright, Imperm Column. Bissio drew a swarm. Okay. It's not engine, it's another hand trap. <laughs> Banishing his own Veiler. The summon itself. Sure, I would have banished something from the bonus graveyard. Personally, but it is what it is, right? So gets rid of that Phantom of U-Bell. Hero's Future just looking here. He's like, okay. Now, because of Nightmare Pain, um, Emery took the damage from that attack, right? So Hero's Future is still sitting at four, uh, at, at a full 8,000 here. So hit him with a set one pass. Okay. It looks like Emery has the advantage now. He's in the driver's seat. But he needs to draw something. He goes straight into battle phase. He still didn't draw anything. It's tough. It's tough out here. The, this this entire tournament run being controlled by the top of your deck. It's crazy. And th this this isn't like the the Maguro versus Quanto we just saw, where it's like one card could dynamically shift. You know the. Like, you're not pulling defeat from nothing, right? At this point, I think a single starter. I mean, they've drawn a few cards each. And no engine, meaning they're probably still drawing hand traps. Or they're bricking. Or they're drawing like stuff like talents. Or what may have you. Now, another thing that's rough is that... Um, teammates have to share a, a card pool. So, if someone has three copies of Effect Villar in their list, then their other two partners cannot be playing Effect Villar at all. So that kind of dictates the way that you play your deck. You would think that, like... Because it seems like Emre is uh, the more, like, trap-heavy guy uh, from his, like, previous two replays, um, which you probably didn't see because it was very small in the corner, but he was playing a lot of trap cards, like uh, Ice Dragon's Prison and stuff. So it's really interesting that... Um, Oh, okay. Maxi, uh, getting met with the Ash Blossom here. And that that's just like, yeah, like he's, he's, he has his Maxi, but it's just not doing enough, you know, or it's not going to do anything. And it just, it's, it felt like that was his way back into this game and it, it just got negated. So I'm not sure if Emre has a way into this game because if this Nightmare Pain resolves, it is going to be a world of hurt. <laughs> For um, snipe hunters here in this uh, turn. 
Because that's like full combo into like Varadross plus fuck. Or I don't know if Varadross is in this game yet. It came out in what, like February over here? Or was that Legacy of Destruction? Was that April? But if Spirit of Ubel is here, fucking Varadross should be in here. I'm not sure. I still don't know shit about Master Duel, so you, you feel feel free to correct my dumbass. Um, but here we go, Nightmare Throne. At least there's no Fiendsmith, right? You're not going to be sitting down a fucking um, Desiree. Because you, uh, you, you still might be sitting down a, a Caesar, uh, facing down a Caesar, because they can still make that with Unchained Engine, but not Desiree. That's not in the game. All right, another Phantom of Ubel. He's got Terror Incarnate and uh, Ubel. And uh, it seems like if he doesn't have any answer to this... Ooh, Phalanx. Okay, so he's playing Centurion. And he's going to be banishing his own Druid Swarm, it seems like, so to avoid any uh, any further battle damage. So now Hero's Future is just forced to go into main phase 2. So he's going to keep comboing off, I think. Because you don't want to leave that Terror Incarnate on the field. Alright, Grave Scormer. Is Grave Scormer going to pop the Terror? Or is he going to use it for a Link Summon? Yeah, you definitely don't want to pop the Terror. Uh, yeah, I, I meant use it for a Link Summon. And then it could like banish itself, bring back the spirit of Ubel. I don't know, go into Gustav. I guess he was trying to play around Nib, but if he was playing Gustav Mox here, he, he could have won the game like right there. He could have bought that nigga to. He could have inflicted two thousand and then bought um. Bought Gustav to 6k and then just attacked with it. it. Is what it is, right? I understand. Understandably, U Bell players are not on the Gustav Max train anymore, but it, it would have gotten them the game this turn. Not that I think that he needed it, but uh, just, uh, just a note. All right. Um, it seems like uh, Snake Eyes player down here uh, got, his, got his dub. So the team Snipe Hunters is actually at the advantage now, right? So they started off at a disadvantage, only one member of their team getting a dub. Second round, Joshua Schmidt getting getting that dub, and uh, Emery got his dub as well. It was only Quanto that fumbled. So now, third round, we're seeing Blue start to take the advantage now. Now it's no longer a tiebreaker. Now these duels are twice as important. And if you look at dual C and dual, dual B, they're like mirrors of each other. It's like one field is completely empty and the other one <laughs> just has like a full board of monsters. For some reason he's going Gigantic Sprite here, which just feels so random. He's going Ibli. Okay, Ibli lock. That, I, I respect it, I think. All right. Sprite Elf. That's interesting. Okay, bring back the Solar Rage. And it's so dumb that fucking Sprite Elf brings back Link Monsters, man. I'm so sick of this card. I'm so sick of it. Why is it still allowed? That's crazy. Alright, so then Centurion, uh, Trap Card... Uh, I don't know. It, it did something, I, I guess. It was just shown there in the corner for a second. He pots of his eyes. He draws two. Banishes ten. Is that even, like, a good card in Centurion? Aren't there too many, like, vulnerable pieces for that? For you to be playing something like Desires? Especially Banish face down. Like, maybe if it was right, regular Banished, that's fine. But Banish face down? I don't know. Anyway, Bissiel Baldrake. By tribute summoning, so that he can uh, play around the Nightmare Ibli. He's gonna do something with it. He's gonna. Oh, he's gonna overlink to Typhon. Okay. 
which uh, doesn't seem like the smartest idea because Mance has a soul of rage. Super Star Slayer Typhon Sky Crisis, effectively negated by the Phantom of Ubel. So, yeah, it seems like Hero's Future held his uh, Soul of Rage because he was like, yeah, I could just use Phantom of Ubel. And he couldn't have summoned it in attack mode because Nightmare Pain would have forced him to attack the Phantom of Ubel. And I believe he would have taken double damage? Unless Phantom doesn't work like that. I'm not too sure. So now he's gonna, gonna resolve the tactics here. But he can't summon anymore because he went to Typhon. So I'm wondering what his... So he's gonna draw two. Let's see what we can get to. Triple tactics, hmm. of course, being that uh, I can't okay. uh, set one red, pass. And you know, it's interesting that you, said, you point that out because yeah, I mean, Soul of Rage gets to link off with the uh, Typhon, Alf gets to bring back the Yama. And he, you know, what's even dumber than uh, Alf bring back Soul of Rage? The fact that Yama works on special summon instead of just link summon. So it gets to trigger off of Elf. Obviously, Elf was banned in TCG well, well before Yama was even conceptualized. <laughs> but um, it's just a stupid interaction. I'm glad these two cards never like this is. Other than this duel, you know this this tag duel being kind of hype. The only thing this is telling me, I'm really glad a lot of this shit is not legal in TCG. Like Maxi is not enough to counterbalance all this nonsense it, it it's it's a fundamental problem with like the power scaling of Yu-Gi-Oh. you think you can't play your favorite deck in the tcg master duel is even worse because there's no side deck so it's even harder to play around a lot of things it's still going Oh, there's the chaos, the boost. Emery's just emo emotionally given up. So they're switching over to uh, Quantel here. So since uh, Snipe Hunters has four stars now, Quantel just needs to take this up because it's clear Emery is not going to take it. And uh, it looks like we're looking at the remnants of a tier mirror match, actually. We're seeing a Mudora attempt to resolve to shuffle some things back. And... Quantel definitely has card advantage here. So it's assumed. You know, King Sark on board, Sharon in defense mode. It's assumed that, like, if this turn ends, because currently it's on the red player's turn, and it's only turn three, and your board is this empty? Like, holy shit. Alright. Oh, he's chaining to a fairy tale snow. Okay. Okay, so yeah, uh, chain of heart, a change of heart targeted a monster on the field. Snow banished that monster to summon itself, and then he's chaining Mudora to shuffle back the snow. But then snow is chaining again to still be able to summon itself out. Um, so it seems like he shuffled back some of the Horus pieces uh, with the Mudora, and now he has a snow and a Sharon, and it looks to be a set one pass. And, oh, he has a snow of his own. Okay, that's interesting. So flip over a Rhino Heart. Going to overlay into rank four. And it's time to redoer. Okay. Going to be triggering that Sharon really quickly. Which is, it's kind of weird Sharon activates off of this because it's not sent to the graveyard because of a card effect. It's like, it's sent to the graveyard as like a byproduct of a card effect. Like, if, if, if that makes sense. I mean, it still does work. It just, it just feels like it should, you know? If it, it, it kind of feels like, oh, well, that's just an accident. Like, it, it shouldn't even be going there. But it is what it is, right? So, going to Collider Heart, spin back the snow, which means it will no longer be in our way. Or Quantel's way. Uh, get the Imseti off the King Sark. And uh, that looks like that's game on board. And he's sitting there, the hero's future, we got him sitting there fucking like Dr. Dooming over here. 
life hunters. Is this it? Does the final attack connect? Oh, we have something. He goes back to his field. He may have something. Do we have the fairy? Do you have different? And no. Uh, that's that's the G of the G's. Team Snipe Hunters made it. Really cool uh, showcase of how hype Master Duel can be if you're not the one playing it. Because I would not want to be in any of those matches. <laughs> Holy shit, playing against Full Power Tier or Ubel with Sprite Elf or anything. Like, the fact that like all those decks were existing or like uh, Fire King Snake Eye. And it's like, they were so close. They... they, they they had four stars. It was it was literally down to the last duel because the Ubel player won against Emre, and it was literally like last duel, last round. It was as close as you can get without being like a literal tiebreaker. They're devastated, but they fought well.